Welcome back to Earth Sky. I'm Deborah Bird speaking with you live on September 8th, 2025. We're here today to talk about meteors. But you know, the trouble with doing these live streams is that we try to plan them at least a day in advance. And that's so we can alert the readers of our daily newsletter, which goes out every morning. But a lot of times something will happen on the morning of the stream that's just so wonderful. And that's the case today. Over the past day, we received so many images of yesterday's total eclipse of the moon. And it wasn't even visible to us in the Americas. I mean, we knew that we had talented people in our community, in the UK and Europe and the Middle East and India and Australia, but wow, they really outdid themselves with photos of this eclipse. We have a separate video of images from yesterday's eclipse up on YouTube now. The link is in the post description. And meanwhile, I'm here today with something else really exciting. It's news of a new meteor shower, a surprise September shower, one that you can try to see. This isn't a big flashy shower like the Perseids or the Geminids. These are the Chi Cygnid meteors. And at the shower's peak, you might see only one meteor per hour. Okay, so hold on. The Chi Cygnid meteors aren't flashy, but they are different. They move slowly. They'll drift across your sky, maybe like nothing you've ever seen before. The shower is rare and mysterious, discovered as recently as 2015 and still not fully understood by astronomers. So even if you don't catch a large number of meteors, just one Chi Cygnid will be memorable. And according to a report from the SETI Institute, dated just four days ago, astronomers noticed an uptick in these meteors around late August and early September. They said the shower should peak around September 13th to 15th. This shower, which I had never heard of in my 50 years of writing about and watching the night sky, is named for its apparent radiant point near the star Chi Cygni, a red giant star located some 500 light years away. This star is circled on this chart. It's near the head of the constellation Cygnus the Swan. More about the radiant point in a moment. First, here's the discoverer of the Chi Cygnids. This is astronomer Peter Jeniskens of NASA Ames Research Center and the SETI Institute. He's a world expert on meteor showers, and he developed the Global Cameras for All Sky Meteor Surveillance Project, aka CAMS project, to map out meteor showers and help determine how the meteors move in space before they encounter the Earth. The scientists find that out by triangulating the paths of the meteors recorded by low-light video cameras set up in multiple places around the globe. So late last month, Peter Jeniskens and his colleagues used CAMS to notice a bump up in activity from the Chi Cygnid shower. The increase was significant, they said, because this meteor shower does appear to surge in activity about every five years. So it showed increased activity in 2010, 2015, and 2020, and now the 2025 jump up in activity seems to confirm that five-year cycle. But will the cycle hold? Will we see Chi Cygnid meteors in the coming nights? You probably know that meteor showers stem from Earth's encounter with bits of sand-sized debris in space. Meteor showers are part of nature, and we all know that nature can be unpredictable. This image shows nights in late August, during which the Chi Cygnid meteors were observed by Dr. Jeniskens and his colleagues. It suggests we will see more of these meteors. And I hope you can see this video, which is from the Astronomical Society of the Caribbean. These are apparently Chi Cygnid meteors 
spotted from Puerto Rico. Uh, and if you can't see them on here, notice that these meteors are moving very slowly. Their slowness is one of their unique features. Uh, the chi cygnids are only modestly bright, but they'll catch your eye because they move so slowly. Their estimated speed is about 15 kilometers per second. Compare that to the famous Perseid meteor shower. The bits of cometary debris that make up the Perseids tear through Earth's atmosphere at about 60 kilometers per second, so about four times faster. And in case you're wondering, the planet we're all riding on, our own Earth, is moving through space at about 30 kilometers per hour. So the Chi Cygnids at 15, Earth at 30, and the Perseids at 60 kilometers per hour. Wait, I'm saying hour, aren't I? I mean, second. Earth is moving at 30 kilometers per second. And all of these are moving at 15. Are the Chi Cygnids at 15, Earth at 30, and the Perseids at 60 kilometers per second. Space is vast, and in space, things have to move fast in order to get anywhere. So, when we talk about things moving in space, we're always talking about huge speeds relative to what we experience here on Earth's surface. So, if I was saying hour above, I apologize, it's per second. Uh, still, partly because space is so vast, even though the chi cygnids are moving super fast in space, they will look slow to your eye when you see one drift across the sky. And you probably also know that, like the Perseids, annual meteor showers happen year after year as Earth and its orbit around the sun intercepts debris left behind in the paths of comets or sometimes asteroids. But we don't know the parent body of the chi cygnid meteors, not for certain anyway. That's one of the questions about this shower. Still, because these meteors jump up in activity every five years, astronomers think they might be particles left behind by an unknown comet in the Jupiter family. Jupiter is the most massive world in our solar system, and Jupiter family comets are what astronomers call short period comets that take less than 20 years to go around the sun. In other words, these comets are heavily influenced by Jupiter's powerful gravity. And so astronomers believe that giant Jupiter might play a role in our seeing the chi cygnid meteors. And uh, that brings us to the moon, because full moon fell yesterday, September 7th, according to clocks in the Americas. So by September 13th, 14th, and 15th, when the chi cygnids might be peaking, the moon will be out of the evening sky. And so there's another unusual thing about this meteor shower. Most meteor showers are best between midnight and dawn, but this one is best in the evening. This week, the moon will be waning, leaving the evening sky. So head out to a dark place in the evening, someplace where it's dark enough to see the edgewise view into our own Milky Way galaxy. And here's just a suggestion. Uh, to find a location, visit Earth Sky's Best Places to Stargaze page. It's crowdsourced. So each red star here represents a dark sky site recommended by you. The link is in the menu bar on every page of our website, earthsky.org. And I promised you a final word about the shower's radiant point in the constellation Cygnus, the swan. In this chart, you'll see the famous summer triangle which is still up every evening now. Three bright stars, Vega, Deneb, and Altair, mark its corners. And inside the triangle, you can see a cross shape. And that's the swan, which contains the radiant point for the chi cygnids. The radiant is near the head of the swan inside this triangle. And it's, it's lots of fun to find these patterns in the night sky but you don't really have to find them and you don't have to look at the radiant point. That's because the meteors can appear in any part of the sky. And if you trace their paths backward, 
you will find them radiating from Cygnus the swan. And that's how you know that you've spotted a rare Chi Cygnid meteor. So look for the Chi Cygnids because it might be only one meteor per hour. I felt like I had to give you some reasons to look. So look for them because number one, they're different, they're slow, and that makes one meteor feel unusual or memorable. Number two, they're rare. If you catch one, you're witnessing part of an astronomical puzzle that's still to be solved. Number three, they provide the thrill of the hunt. It's like bird watching. Spotting a rare new meteor uh, can make you feel happy, even if it's the only meteor you see all night. Plus, you'll just enjoy the sights and sounds and smells that go along with being outside on a dark, uh, under a dark night sky. And here's one last tip, because Cygnus the Swan is already high in the sky. When darkness falls, it's best not to look for these meteors while standing up. You'll want a reclining chair or a blanket on the ground. Lie back, relax, and look casually overhead for the meteors. If you spend a few hours under a dark sky, you'll probably see some. Good luck. One Earth, one sky, Earth sky.